In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Zones and Rooms screen. This screen is where you'll enter inputs related to each of the individual rooms you have set up in your project. Basic inputs here include the room title, number of copies of this room, note that this will be multiplied out to contribute towards the total ASU load, and then you also enter in your floor area and ceiling height. Note that the ceiling height entered here is only used to calculate the volume of the room for the purposes of air change rates. If you have a room with a very high ceiling, you may choose not to enter in your actual ceiling height here and instead just enter in the height that you wish to consider for air conditioning purposes. The storage mass input is in kilograms per meter squared and relates to the thermal inertia of the room construction. A higher number here will mean that more heat from solar gain is stored in the room fabric and then released later in the day. For more information on this, refer to Chapter 3 of the ERA DA9 3rd edition on heat storage, diversity and stratification. There is also a storage mass calculator provided, which follows the method set out in the DA9. You can open it by right-clicking the cell here. This calculator draws from the inputs entered in on your external and partition screen, so make sure you've filled these in first before using this calculator. If you change your inputs on these screens afterwards, you'll need to come back here and rerun your storage mass calculator again. In Camel Plus, the result from this calculator is shown for reference only. The load calculation only uses the value entered in this storage mass cell so make sure you transfer to any calculated storage mass that you want to use into this cell before continuing. Moving on, you can enter your room infiltration in air changes per hour, which represents the ambient air that leaks into your room. You can also enter a vapor gain in kilowatts of latent heat to capture water vapor transmission through the room envelope. More information on both of these parameters can be found in Chapters 5 and 6 of the DA9 3rd edition. If on the AHU screen you selected the Enter in Rooms option for the outside air, you will be able to enter in your outdoor air here. There are different units you can choose from for this depending on your requirements. Just note that this is air changes per hour and is based on the floor area and ceiling height entered above and that this litres per second per person is based on the room occupancy input on the internal screen. Here you have the option to extract air from the room and spill it to another room in the project. You can also specify a minimum supply air quantity for the room. Be careful not to set this too high, particularly for rooms with low loads as it could result in a high cooling coil leaving air temperature for this AHU. This will then increase the amount of supply air going to all the other rooms connected to this AHU as well. Finally, you can enter in your supply duct gain for the room either as a fixed kilowatt heat gain or a percentage of the room sensible heat. And you can enter a percentage for your supply air leakage loss here. More information on these can be found in Chapter 7 of the DA9 3rd edition. That's all for this video. Please join me in the next one, where we'll be looking at the external screen. Bye for now.